Welcome back to TGD Today. It is Pro Golf Talk Live right here with Al and George. And we kicked Hugh out of the studio. That's right. We said vamoose. I didn't like his attitude today. Go take a hike. You can't I mean, it, could he get any more depressing? Man, I'll tell you what. I just don't, huh? I don't know. You can't beat it. What is it? I love it. Well, I'm glad <laughs> to have you here. Back in black. That's it. No mercy back for the week. Black. Unbelievable to have you back, dude. You're, you, we missed you, brother. Man, I'll tell you what. I'm so happy to be back. Are you okay? Oh, heck yeah. You keep reaching down there. What's well, wrong? I've got no audio. I'm fixing that right now. Okay. No audio. Well, I'll take it then. Pro Golf Talk Live. And this is a very, very, very important week on the tour. And I'm talking about the PGA Tour. We're not going to discuss Solheim. We've already done that. We're not going to discuss President's Cup. We've already done that. We're going to talk about the Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola going on at one of my personal favorite golf courses. I've had the opportunity of playing it several times, and that is Eastlake Country Club in the downtown Atlanta area. And uh, the boys love going to Eastlake. Basically, another third home, I guess you would call it, of Bobby Jones. No doubt. So, no doubt. hollowed grounds. Hallowed grounds. Hallowed grounds. We call them, Tennessee, we call them hollowed grounds. Hollowed? Yeah. Okay. Like a hollered tree? Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Got it. <laughs> um, have you ever been to East Lake? No, sir. Okay. It's, it's first off, you, 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 haven't took me. you drive in, and you have to be in an armored car, and you have to be have at least sidewinders and 30 millimeter Gatling gun on the front of your vehicle Got that to get there. Got that cover. I know you do. Yeah. The Black Beast is, is prepared. Yes, sir. When you get, when you pull into the gate, it's it's somewhat like Augusta in the fact you come through a, a guardhouse, but you start seeing the property from the fence line. And what you don't realize at East Lake, folks, and maybe if you heard me last year when I gave you a course description of how to play the holes, and Jeff, if we can go back in our archives and run that, that'd be great. But they built this 18-hole golf course on some of the smallest acreage that you have ever laid your eyes on. You can stand at number four tee box, which is one corner, and that is the northwest corner of the property. And you can see clear to the other end, which would be southeast. That's wild. You can see all the way the other side of the golf course. It's the only place I know you can do that, except for a muni somewhere. Exactly. A nine-holer. Right, right. You know, or a par yeah. three. Yeah. So when you get there, you sit there and go, the whole golf course is right here? Because also, it's an entirely wrapped in fencing with razor barbed wire at the top of it. Right. Uh, it has its history, but with uh, Mr. Cousins, who had gone through there and total, did a total revamp of the neighborhood, um, through uh, Arthur Blank, through Coca-Cola, through the other contributors that ponied up at Eastlake early on in the refurbishment and regeneration of the club. It was in demise. It was in disrespair. You know, it had evidently not gone into bankruptcy, but it was very close into receivership. It was a landmark, an historic landmark, not only for Atlanta, but in the, in the golf industry. Yes. And... Yeah. It had fallen into total, total disrepair. And so they went in there, they redid the clubhouse, they redid the playing grounds and the grasses. And this is one of the things I want you to look for this week during the tour championship. I mentioned this last year, I mentioned this the year before, okay? East Lake is unique in the fact that you're going to sit there and be watching the television coverage. And like the first hole, folks, it's a par four. It's straight away. It goes a little bit downhill, and then it climbs back uphill. And you're looking at it going, what's so special about this? Well, all the fairways at East Lake are soja, which means they take the mowers and they mow all the blades of this zoysia grass toward the tee box. So picture this. You guys go home and do this. Take a mattress off of your bed cover it in the receive the female side of Velcro, then take a golf ball and wrap it in the male side of Velcro, and then hit a shot onto the mattress. And that's exactly what, the, what you're going to get with your reaction of a driver coming off the tee box. The ball hits the fairways and just stays right there. It doesn't move. It just doesn't move. You don't get this exorbitant roll. 
you don't get this great, you know, kicks. You're not, you're not playing for these little mound areas like you do at so many other courses like Conway Farms last week, where if you hit this little parameter 12-foot section, you get an additional 40 yards. You just don't have that at East Lake. So this is basically a target golf course. It, it is. It. it is. But it's long enough because you sit and look at the total yardage, which is around 6980. And you say, my goodness, that's short for the tour. Well, because of the grasses they've got in the fairway, and because of the grass they have in the rough, which they will let go up to about two and a quarter inches, and this is rough to where if you don't have marshlers and they are hidden on each hole, and many of the holes are parallel to get it on that acreage, they had to be. But you'll see marshlers placed almost every 15 to 20 yards apart that will be watching for balls going into the rough from the fairway. Okay, so let's say that they hit their tee ball, they go into the rough. There will be somebody very close by to see approximate area where it went, and then you'll see them go place the little flag. Because if they don't, I guarantee you, it will take them five minutes to find it. The ball just disappears. And two and a half inches of grass. It goes to nowhere. You think that there's a basement throughout the entire golf course, and the balls just naturally go down in the basement. Okay? And getting the ball out of this rough is then your next problem. And bless the heart, Jim Fury with his hurt wrist, there's no way he could hit a shot out of this stuff. No. No way. Then you get to the holes that you're sitting there going, like number two, for example. It's going to play about 210 yard, par three. And again, you're teeing off literally 14 steps from the first green. Okay? So the players just walk 14 steps over, and boom, they're on the tee box. They're going back toward the clubhouse with their par three, number two. Now, you're sitting there going, okay, 210 yards, it'll play 190 one day, it'll play 185 the next, it'll play 205 the next, and then 210 on the final day. Okay? It doesn't matter. There's bunkers up there around the green. You say, oh, well, we just got to get it over the bunker. Uh Uh-uh. Doesn't matter. There's a little bit of water down at the bottom end of the hill. Doesn't matter. This this total hole is dictated by the pin, totally by the pin. Number two can play four different ways depending on where they put the pin on this green. It is the most notorious, nasty putting surface you have ever laid your eyes on. It's not that big, but you'd walk up there, and I've stood at the tee box back when I played it in April before I went to Augusta, and, of course, I'm with the Callaway boys, and we were on the Callaway trip. And I'm standing there on the tee box, and the guys who had never played there before, their, the pin was back behind the green or back behind the bunker, front left. And they're saying, oh, well, what is it to carry the bunker? And the caddies and myself are sitting there just shaking our head. No, you don't want to do that. And they're going, what do you mean? Said the pin's right behind the bunker. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Well, what do you mean? Well, if you get in the bunker to begin with, four is a good score. Right. You're probably going to make five or six. No, I'm a better golfer than that. Okay, dude, go ahead and put it in that bunker. Then, if you try to fly it into that pin, it's not going to stay. It's not going to stay. It goes on these champion Bermuda greens. It hits and then goes over, and then you are trying to stop. You picture yourself standing on your countertop in your kitchen. You hit a chip shot off the countertop, and you got to stop it before it hits the linoleum in the floor. <laughs> Picture that, folks. That's what you've got at East Lake. And then when the ball hits the green, it's going to be running about 14 on the stem. And it is going to run. It is going to run. You gauge a good round of golf for an amateur player at East Lake if you have two five putts or less. Two five putts or less. That's a good round. So East Lake, intimidating wise, it's out there in front of you. There's not a lot of trouble. You've got the water left on 17. You've got the long par 3, 18, which is unique in the fact that it is a tournament championship course that finishes with a par 3. But let me tell you what, it plays like a par 4. You play it as a par 4, and just if you make par, if you make 3, you picked up a shot on the field. Exactly. It plays 240 yards uphill, and the hard part of the hole is the green. 
It's not the tee shot. It's the green. I have personally, you, you can't go over because you're in the parking lot. Well, there is no parking lot at East Lake. Sorry. You're on the frontage road, entryway into the clubhouse. Of course, there's grandstands behind it now, so that'll block you. But when us amateurs are out there playing it, there's nothing up there. The point is, folks, these greens dictate this golf course. And interestingly, this week, they will be playing it as only two par fives in the entire golf course. Number five, which normally plays for the members as a par five, is a par four. It will play 530 yard par four. That's stout. It is stout. It is a, hell, it's a hard hole as a par five. Exactly. And they play it as a par four. And then number 10, which is for the members or the guest, a par five, they will likewise play that as a par four, 500 yards uphill, 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 into the Zoysia fairways, uphill, into a small little bottleneck green, uphill, into an undulated green that has four different levels in it, uphill, and it's got a couple of bunkers around the green just to really piss you off. You know, I, 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 I'm kind of getting the feeling. Uphill. <laughs> How many times can I say that? Uphill. I'm kind of getting the feeling that that course has whooped your butt a couple times. Whooped my butt? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had to go get therapy. Yeah, I, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. I mean, what a great, <laughs> great golf course. It is a player's golf course. It is a shot maker's golf course. You have to meander within the, uh, the front nine. There's not a lot of climate adjustment that you have to uh, account for, except for number six, the par three over the lake. <coughs> you really got to pay attention to the wind. Because your landing area is about a circumference of 20 yards diameter. If you don't hit that, you're in the water. And we've seen so many people make birdie on four or five, which is phenomenal birdie on that par four. And then they get to six, and Zach Johnson last year, double bogey. Kirk Triplett, double bogey. You know, you see just so much, these one little individual holes take advantage of these individuals who are the top 29 now that Jim Fury has pulled out of the world. And they are starting today at 11.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The first group off, Louis Oosthuizen with Harris English. Good pairing. Louis Oosthuizen is going to go out and set the pace with one of the purest golf swings in the game of golf. No doubt. That'll be fun to watch. So then you've got Kevin Na and Sang Moon Bay. Uh, the good old American Kevin Na, along with the, of course, South uh, Korean Sang Moon Bay, who has gotten so much attention here lately, and justifiably so. He's playing on the President's Cup, and he needs to be playing on the President's Cup, and we're going to miss him during his 20 months of required military service just after the President's Cup. So it's almost like he's got to report to prison. I don't know. I, I can't figure that out. Everybody talks like, oh, my goodness, he's, he's got to report and all this. I served in the military, folks, 10 best years of my life, so it's not really that bad. He's just going to be away from the tour for that amount of time. Third off at 12 o'clock, high noon, Brooks Kepka and Bill Haas. Bill Haas, of course, on the President's Cup team. Brooks Kepka, one of those most talked about to be possible replacement for one Jim Furyk, depending on how this week turns out with him, Al. So, um, Anything broken, uh, that's going to be tough for him. It sounds like surgery. Does it not sound like surgery? Yes, that's kind of what it, yeah. It, you know, yeah. I mean, it's going to be, you know, uh, some sort of a scope type surgery, you know, probably just removal of bone fragments or whatever. But the way it was released in the press release, you know, it, it sounded like a pretty bad break. Oh, no doubt. So, yeah. obviously something needs to be I, done there. And I've never seen a good break. No, <laughs> nor have I. Thank you for yes, correcting sir. me. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, going on down, uh, again, Jim Furyk is removed. Hideki Matsuyama will be playing with a marker. J.B. Holmes and Kevin Kisner are playing together. That's a good pairing. Those two are in the running along with Brooks Kepka for possible replacement of Jim Furyk. It's all going to depend for Captain Haas on how these young guns play this week. Yes. Um, I, I would imagine – those that are already on the team are going to be right up there at the leaderboard on coming on Sunday, but uh, it's going to depend on these others as to where they finish up, whether they will be making that trip over in just one week's time to South Korea in preparation for the President's, President's Cup. 
interesting pairing going off at 1.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Rory McIlroy with Justin Rose. Yes. Two countrymen, fellow countrymen, of course, one from one country and one from another, but they're all over there in, in you know, the Greater Britain and yes. the Britain Isles. Uh, but, however, Rory and Justin will be playing together. Phenomenal. Good pairing. I think they get along well together, and uh, they should have fun out on the golf course. Bubba is playing with Zach. So there's two opposites. Opposites attract, I guess, but uh, two absolute opposites. Dustin Johnson is playing today with Charlie Hoffman. They're going off at 130. Ricky Fowler's with Henrik Stenson. And, interestingly, you know, everybody's talking about Ricky's a good possibility, a good pick here. Um, I mean, unless Jason Day just absolutely runs away with this thing. Okay. Which he could. Uh, it's Jason Day's to win or lose, and then everybody else is playing for second, from what I gather, with all the media hype going into this week. He's on fire right now. Right? No, okay. There's just no, no two ways around. Somebody saw him on fire and then poured gasoline all over him. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I mean, he's torching right now. No doubt. He's leading every category, folks, on the tour. Greens and regulation, driving distance, fairways hit, uh, putts gained. He's leading it all. I mean, there's not a category out there, including best dressed, uh, best Winnebago. He's got it all. He's got it all. Yeah. He's playing, I mean, phenomenal playing. But he is paired, Jason Day's paired with number one and number two. Is paired together. Jordan Speed, Jason Day go off at 2 o'clock. That is a pairing. Ricky Fowler's with Henrik, as I mentioned. Bubba's with Zach. Dustin's with Charlie Hoffman. Daniel Berger, Daniel Berger, a late entry fee into the Tour Championship. Daniel Berger playing good as of late to get himself into this in the top 30 positions in the World Golf Rankings and in the FedEx Cup standings. He's playing with Patrick Reed, the world's number five player, who's not number five anymore. But uh, that's another story. We won't go into that. That's right. So, as you see here, this is the best of the best, as we like to refer to it here at TGD Radio and TGD TV. So, thusly, these boys, 29 of them, of course, Jim Furyk has removed himself from the field this week. We are still unsure whether he will be traveling to South Korea for the President's Cup. We are unsure of his uh, status as far as health. We are unsure if Captain Haas is going to go ahead and wait till Monday. Uh, he, I would imagine Monday being the absolute latest. If he doesn't do it Sunday night from Eastlake, uh, he may just surprise us and do it Sunday evening. That way the recipient of the, uh, the new player named will uh, probably and more than likely still be on property while, we're, while he's there. So he'll have the opportunity of communicating that with them. I do know that Captain Haas has been reaching out to a few people with history in the President's Cup and at format, and so he has been throwing names around from what I've been told. So um, it's going to be an interesting situation, Al. I, I'm just, oh, definitely. you know, I, I hope Jim's okay, yeah. but if, from everything and the quietness, yeah. I think if everything looked pretty good and he was just waiting for some a second opinion or a third opinion or whatever, that would have probably already leaked out. Yep. But yep. considering the absolute quiet, the absolute silence, except for the very structured and and detail, non-detailed description of the injury. Yes, sir. Um, I think this Thanks, may be sir. worse. I think yep. this may be worse than we we had hoped for for Jim. And um, it, you know, nothing but the best. A very quick recovery. <laughs> One of the best on tour, dude. No doubt. One of the best on tour. I got the opportunity to meet him down at the uh, Monday after the Masters. Yep. And uh, he got a picture with him, got his autograph. You know, he's just just a really nice guy. You know, a lot of guys don't take the time to do that kind of stuff. But to us little guys out here, that stuff means the world. Well, it does. And for us that just love the game, I mean, you know, we we look upon them guys as as being the industry leaders for us. And uh, so, you know, we look upon them, even though they aren't in the manufacturing and they're not in the golf course ownership and they're not in this or that, but, you know, they are the marketing product for the game of golf. They're the fuel that fires. You know, they're the fuel. Yeah, they are. I mean, there's no two ways around. It runs the engine. It runs the engine, yes. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, again, Tour Championship, East Lake, presented by Coca-Cola. You're going to get tons of television coverage. You're going to get coverage here at TGD Radio and TGD TV. Watch it. Enjoy it. 
enjoy East Lake. And folks, if you have the opportunity, if you're anywhere around the area, if you have the opportunity to go there today, tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday, East Lake is one of the easiest venues to get tickets, to get on property, to walk around and get side by side and rub elbows with these 29 players. You will not find another tournament anywhere in the world, any time during the year, that you can get as close, up front, and personal with these players as you can at the Tour Championship at East Lake. So take advantage of it and go. I took my wife last year. She must be obeyed. Yes, sir. She actually thanked me for doing something. Oh, man. You can't beat a deal like that. No. No. I have since lost those oh, yeah, yeah. thousands out of boys. points. Yeah, yeah just one off shit gets rid of all that. Yeah. So. All right, European Tour this week. Interesting layout. They have returned to Germany in the Porsche. Porsche. I said Porsche. This is the first tournament Porsche has ever, ever sponsored. That's interesting. And the European Open returns after a six-year hiatus, and it returns to Griesbach Golf Resort, and they are in Griesbach, Germany. And uh, right now, this morning, two 700 pars have gone out there posting 64s. And, of course, it's a par 71 course. Bern Weisberger and Benjamin Hebert have gone out at 7 under par. There are five players at minus six, and then there's uh, three or four players at minus five. So the, the guys are taking advantage of the golf course, which, interestingly, Al, they've noted a drought that's been going on in Europe, especially in, uh, in uh, the continent of Europe. And they were talking about how gardens and farms and all that have just turned into dust bowls, but uh, evidently when they built this particular golf course, they found an extensive underground well system and spring system, and so they've been able to keep it lush, and actually they got a little bit of rain at the beginning part of this week, and so now they have determined they're going to play lift, clean, and cheat for four days. There you go. They're going to go ahead and, and do a pick and clean, just simply because the golf course was wet. Even though the the surrounding area is brown, the golf course is lush and green and all that. So the golf course is in beautiful shape. Kind of like Vegas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, well, if you got it, spend it. You That's know it, I mean? brother. That's it. it. If you got water, throw it out. Throw there. it out there. Yeah, yeah. It ain't going nowhere. So just throw it out there. It good, just seeps. Good Lord will make some more of it. It just seeps back down on the ground and goes back into your reservoir. That's right. It ain't going nowhere. So just throw it out there. That's so. Right. They got plenty of grass. The greens are, are rolling really good. Uh, the golf course is actually uh, looks like a fun one to play. There's a couple of holes they can get close to the green with their drives. There's a couple of par fives that are very reachable. If Graham McDowell is going for greens in two, you know that they're somewhat reachable. Uh, he has now become one of the slowest swingers of the golf club on the tour. And uh, But it's good to see Graham over there. They needed a name. Martin Keimer pulled out of this event. And uh, they don't know if it's health-related or mental-related or just tired or whatever. But uh, the event being in his own backyard, basically, Keimer had decided to take this week off. But Bernhard Longer made the trip over. And so he is playing in the event. And uh, that's kind of surprising, too. But that's Bernhard, who he is, the type of person he is, supporting a European tour event in his home country versus playing in the first tee uh, tournament, which tees off tomorrow at Pebble Beach. Right, yes. So, Germany, Pebble Beach. Yeah. Germany, Pebble Beach. And Bernhard, being the sponsor and the supporter and the, and the activist that he is, he goes back to homeland Germany and, and says, I'll be here for the Porsche European Open. Nice. So, congratulations nice. to him for doing that. I think that was a good move on his part. Oh, definitely. So, because, I mean, what's he going to do? Show up at Pebble and just win another one? I mean, who knows? But, uh, <laughs> I mean, the Champion Store, he's pretty much dominated for a couple of years now. Yeah. Although, Colin Montgomery is currently leading their points race. So, uh, Miguel Hanhel Jimenez actually has a good round today. He shoots four under 67. Uh, there are several others. Uh, Jamie Donaldson had four under 67. Good for Jamie. Uh, he's kind of fallen off the blip screen over the last couple of weeks, but it's good to see him back out and playing well. Hopefully he has four good days of doing that. An individual that's playing in, in, in the Porsche Open, European Open, that I really was hoping would make it to Eastlake, and that's Charles Swartzel. Uh, it would have been wonderful to see him and Louie again play together at, at yes. Eastlake. 
the two best swings in golf, no doubt about it. So uh, that would have been a lot of fun. But Louis makes it, Charles doesn't. So Charles goes back over into Germany and plays the Porsche European Open. Uh, another tournament that is going on this week, Al, and uh, one that has some significance, is the Web.com Tour event that's going on in Columbus, Ohio, at the Scarlet Course, OSU Golf Course. And this is on the property of Ohio State University, folks. They're in Columbus, Ohio. And it's the Nationwide Children's Hospital Championship. And again, this is their playoff season. And they are playing for the other 25 tour cards that is going to be handed out after this event and next week's event. So, uh, nice. yep. So a lot of nerves. A lot, a lot of nerves. nerves. Yeah, you a just lot of stake. That's what I was going to. A lot of yep. nerves. Yeah, a lot of stuff at stake. Well, right now, through 12 holes, Alex Aragon is in 63rd position starting in the final 25. He is projected right now, if he was to win this event, he would move to number three in the top 25. And in the final 25, excuse me. And so he would be pretty much guaranteeing his card. So let's wish Alex a, a lot of success here for the next several days. He's at minus 4 through 12. Robert Garrigus is minus 3 through 9. Aaron Watkins is minus 3 through 9. Chez Reeve, minus 2 through 13. Uh, Henrik Norlander, minus 1 through 13. Tim Petrovic is minus 1 through 13. Uh, we go on down the list, many of them that are playing in the event have already earned their card, like Cabello, like Bergen, for example. They are both at 100 through 11, but they've already got their card. They're just playing for status, Al. That's, that's, yes. They're trying to improve their number. Exactly. So, uh, you know, they know they're going to the big show. Right. They're just trying to get a better ticket down front. That's right. That's, that's, right. Right. that's it. They want a better seat. That's it. That's Can't it. beat it. So, <laughs> Greg Chalmers is one under. Blake Adams is one under. Jonathan Bird, even par. Jonathan Justin Hicks, even par. Ricky Barnes is even. Uh, we go on down the list here. Tom Gillis at, at uh, plus one. Kevin Tway, plus one, of course, son of Bob Tway, uh, who has been on the PGA Tour forever and a day, now on the Champions Tour. Tommy Two Glove Ganey at one over par through 10. Right. This Tommy. is this is not a Tommy Ganey golf course. No. Uh, in the fact, you, you talk about you got to fly the ball everywhere. You've got to shot shape the ball. I have played this scarlet course. Um, it is a shot maker's course just simply because of the rough and the soils. Um, it is a soft golf course, if you know what I mean. Oh, no, exactly. So, uh, but one thing about it is you've got little to no humidity. You've got uh, cooler temperatures this week, and so thusly uh, the ball is going to be flying forever. So uh, a lot of these guys, Tommy Ganey's not the longest hitter in the world, but he's not the shortest hitter. So yep. he's just going to have to pick up his game. And where Tommy's game has fallen off is with his putter. So hopefully he has a decent putting week, and he's able to get in to, again, finish this week and then qualify for the final. Lucas so, Glover. <laughs> there's a name from the past, and then yep. Vaughn Taylor, yep. two over par. Yep. Uh, going down through the list, Michael Kim, two over par through 10. Uh, we go on down. Aaron Badley is there. He's, he's having a rough start. Aaron Badley, yeah. Three over par through 11. Tag Ridings, three over par through 12. Um, we go on down. Patton Gazire, who finished number one money winner on the Web.com Tour at the end of the regular season, he was the number one tour card handed out from the first 25 earned on the Web.com Tour. Patton Gazire is right now four over par through 14. Frankly, he's not going to help himself much. He's already qualified. Yep. So he's got full exempt status. So he's just out trying to win a check, obviously. Aaron so, Badley. Aaron Badley. Yeah. Matthew Coggin. Uh, again, all these individuals, Jonathan Vegas, uh, that we mentioned, they have been on the tour, and they're trying to keep their cards. They are trying to get back to the big show because most of these guys are going to be spending next year basically on the Web.com tour. They won't be on the PGA tour primarily. So a lot of these guys are just trying to get their cards, trying to get exempt status again, and to where they don't have to fight for those uh, those sponsor exemptions week to week. Exactly. Sam Saunders, the grandson of Arnold Palmer. Uh, right now, he is not teed off yet. He goes off at 1230. Uh, he is uh, part of that. Uh, again, you mentioned Lucas Glover, yep. Michael Thompson, Steve Marino. Ryan uh, uh, Armour. Ryan Armour? Yep. Yeah. 
Now, is he, is he, is he, is he from the Armour family? I don't know, dude. I, I'm not sure. I don't have that. I can try to look it up for you, but I don't have Ain't it. No biggie. Um, I mean, you go down through the list here. Uh, no, I don't think so. Now, you go down through, you know, a lot of these guys we've seen for years. Tim Heron, he's back at the web.com trying to get his tour, PGA Tour card back. Chase Wright. I mean, these are names that we've known. Uh, these are names that we've heard on the leaderboards in the past. Um, so Billy Hurley the third, uh, he's been out there. He's been to the big show. He's now back trying to gain his way. He's trying to climb back up the ladder again. You know, it's it's this is their guy's career. This is their guy's jobs. If if they're not able to, you know, keep their cards and or they're not even able to keep their web.com tour cards, okay. you know, that's life changing. Oh, big time. I mean, it's, they got to figure out something to do. Yeah. You know, do I keep we hear about the stories of, oh, if I hadn't won this week, I was going to quit next week. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. what are you going to do? Sell cards? Well, I mean, there's just a, you know, you, there's you're just gonna a go, boy. You're, you're going to go to the golf director and be a broadcaster? There you go. I, you know, hey, you can't beat a deal like that. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> you can't beat All right, dude, a lot going on in the in the pro golf community. Um, we're, you know, we've had a great day here talking about it all. Again, this week, big thing, tour championship, East Lake, presented by Coca-Cola. A couple of weeks away, of course, South Korea, the President's Cup. Uh, this week, Jim Furyk going down with what looks to be a wrist injury. Uh, still to be determined the severity of that injury. We hope it's nothing. We hope it's pretty much just precautionary on his part and that he's able to return quickly. I hope he's able to play. I hope he's able to go to South Korea and all this is a mute point. So um, if not, then um, a pick has to be made by Captain Haas. That is correct. So, uh, Al, thanks for joining me on Pro Golf Talk Live. Thank you for having me. And uh, I enjoyed having you more than I did that other guy. So, <laughs> you can't beat a deal like that. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out those featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. Need help with your next golf vacation? Just, Just call, call Dave. Dave. Give us a call right here at the Golf Director, 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-464-6531. All of our programming is archived for listening or viewing on demand. To catch up on any show you may have missed, you can click on the TGD Radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. We're now available on over 1 billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Periscope, Catch.me, Blueberry, and Myrtle Beach Golf App. For Hugh Roy, who's not here, Al Cloy, and George Honeycutt, and Jeff Behind the Glass, we want to thank all of you for tuning, for watching, and listening to us here on Pro Golf Talk Live. There's a ton more golf news and information coming up next.